All right, everyone, this is probably going to be the last time I try and record this video because I've gone to about three to four takes of this <clears throat> and still have not found my groove. I mean, that's, I guess, why you don't lay off recording videos for three months is because all my work, as far as my anxiety in front of the camera, has gone to shit. This is a new project I'm starting called Baby Steps in SolidWorks. Basically... It revolves around the fact that I'm learning SOLIDWORKS as we speak. Okay, I am a newbie with SOLIDWORKS as well. So I decided to start these videos so that I could show other people and I could help teach people how I learn. Because right now I'm learning the things that are relevant to me. I'm facing the struggles that new people in a new environment, software environment, commonly face. Um, one of the reasons it's called Baby Steps is because... If you don't learn a tool like SOLIDWORKS in a classroom, if you don't have an instructor, if, you know, it's not academic in nature, then what does everyone typically advise you to do? Go play around with software, you know, learn to do basic things, acquire skills from there. So like I'm, I'm trying to orient baby steps in such a way that it will serve to teach you basic steps one at a time. Again, baby steps, little bite-sized pieces. It doesn't necessarily mean each video will be short. Okay, I might, you know, take a little bit of liberty with my explanations, go over things in a good amount of detail, but it's going to be short, succinct, to the point, um, and it's going to really focus on one skill at a time. So the first video will be, well, this introduction. The next video will be doing basic shapes, making boxes, squares, circles, cylinders. The next one will be, you know, doing patterns. So applying some of the automation features that SOLIDWORKS has. Then from there on, it's stuff like equation-driven curves. And then it, finally, it's just applying the skills in different orders, starting to learn to branch out and do other things with SOLIDWORKS. Because there's no doubt this is a very versatile program if you give it the time of day to learn to work with it by all means it's it's one hell of a program to learn it just takes the time so again I kinda am trying to orient the videos around again how I feel comfortable learning and you know they say the best way to learn something is to teach it and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this is so I learn the game better for myself. But one of the major reasons is to help you guys. Because I see a lot of SOLIDWORKS videos where, you know, it's labeled as a t tutorial. It's labeled as a how-to. But no one ever explains anything in the video. It's more just kind of an expose of, hey, I can do this. And as a beginner, that doesn't help at all. So that being said, one of the things I find easiest is to compare it to a reference base. And you know from watching my channel that typically I'm, you know, working in the hobby, amateur, going toward hopefully professional at some point, but still at this point, amateur level machining, okay? So typically my prior exposure to CAD software has been Google SketchUp, however lame that may sound. And what I'm going to try to do, although this will make you laugh, is paint a comparison of SketchUp to SOLIDWORKS. And this is because of the fact that if SketchUp has one thing going for it in the world, it's that it is available for a price of free. And for most hobbyists, or most, you know, not full-time experimenters, for most people who don't have to have training in CAD, SketchUp is a godsend. It is CAD for people who don't know CAD. Um, that being said, there are a number of things that I mean I never I never worried about when I was using SketchUp, but then when I moved up to SolidWorks, I really began to see the light. And that makes it sound like I found Jesus, but I began to realize that there are many things I just could not do within the confines of SketchUp. That there were ways the program saw my modeling that were just not possible. 
not possible to do in the sense of manufacturing, precision, repeatability, that were just not viable candidates for ways to model. And generally, generally these fall along the lines of A, curves. Curves are very important, and it's one of the biggest drawbacks and gripes I have about SketchUp. The second one is automation. SketchUp has little to no automation ability. And the third part is in manufacturing. SolidWorks, Inventor, NX, these, you know, Cadia, these programs are designed for manufacturing. These programs are designed to allow you to design material, not material, basically finished grade products that are designed to be used. So you design a model, you can then integrate add-ins into SolidWorks that allow you to automatically generate the G-code to send to a CNC machine to manufacture your part. They are designed with manufacturing in mind. They are designed to make manufacturing easier. Whereas SketchUp is just kind of, hey, I want to draw this out. So SketchUp is good for sketching up things. Now that being said, let me tackle the other two things, which are automation and curves. I'll demonstrate curves first. Curves will be quick. Essentially in SketchUp, you have a fundamental limitation and that is in how the program naturally defines a curve. As far as SketchUp is concerned, a curve isn't a curve. A circle would not be a circle. Essentially in SketchUp, it defines a circle as a polygon with a certain number of sides. Um, naturally an arc would be a number of lines approximating the curve of that arc. Now this is all fine and dandy um, if you're just kind of doing hobbyist grade, again hobbyist grade stuff because when I mean, we you know most likely we've all taken calculus so we all know the concept of Riemann sums that as you increase the number of sides you increase the approximation of the circle. But there's no doubt a 24-sided shape is not a circle. It does not handle like a circle if you extrude it, if you begin to play with it. If you're trying to do precision manufacturing, you're going to manufacture 24 sides. You're not going to manufacture a circle. Um, and this is an important distinction to make. Now, one of the real hallmark tests I like to use to demonstrate this firsthand is, I mean, the sort of acid test for this is how to make a torus. Now, in SketchUp, you would typically take a circle like this. Let's call this circle one. So, circle one is rot rotated ar around the z-axis, and its radius lies on the x or y, whatever. Um, you would typically draw a circle where the radius lies on the X and Z. Again, look down here, where the little axes are. Where the radius lies on the Z and X, and the center line goes up the Y. You would then rotate this, you would then use a follow me tool to spin the circle around the follow me path of the second circle to create your torus. But what you would real quickly notice is that your torus is not a true torus. It is simply an approximation of a torus. It is a 3D object with a finite number of faces. And that is not a circle. I mean, if you really want to quantify the number of faces, ideally it would be 24 times 24 if both the circles were 24 faced. I'm not going to do that math. I really could care less at this point. But, and you get the point. Whereas SolidWorks 
sees a circle as an equation. It sees it as x squared plus y squared equals r squared, the standard circular formula. Um, Equation-driven cur driven curves, splines. I mean, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but Bezier curves. Again, if I butchered that pronunciation, I apologize. But these are all visualized by the program as equations. So the so the program can render them with almost infinite resolution. Now, as you see, as soon as you decide to click Evolve Boss and Base up here, you instantaneously generate a torus that has perfect and perfect smoothness. And that's the core attribute that, as far as I'm concerned, puts SolidWorks ahead of SketchUp in terms of just general usability. Then the other thing is in linear and circular patterns, you can apply automation to, these comp to feature sets. So, okay, let's say we want to put a bolt hole that goes around the torus. We want to put 24 bolt holes. In SketchUp, you would have to do 24 bolt holes by hand. And trust me, that's a pistol. I know because I've had to do it. Whereas in SolidWorks, you could simply t put one bolt hole through. You could then filter, chamfer the hole as needed boss it out, do whatever. You can then select the temporary axis of rotation, the center axis right here. You would then tell it to rotate that hole 360 degrees and put 24 instances of that bolt hole. And then click the green check mark and it would do it. That's automation. Okay, what would take you an hour you did in three clicks. And these features, these components of SolidWorks are what really make it start to shine. I mean, right now it's probably looking like Greek to you, all these weird evaluating bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But when you really get to know SolidWorks, you, you really get to see that it is and it is one hell of a program to start using. And that's the best way I can put it at this point. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much going to summarize the introduction. Um, the next video is going to be more about actually doing something. What we're going to do is we're going to actually produce a simple part. That being said, this simple part will be absolutely useless. You know, I'm, you know it's going to be a simple square and circle or some, something of that nature but it will give you enough to actually start going with SolidWorks it will it will teach you enough so that now you're actually simply going out there and making shapes that may not seem like a lot right now but if you continue to follow these videos you will learn how to do advanced features like the aforementioned you know the circular and linear patterns you will learn how to define shapes by curves, so equation-driven curves, and do actually some pretty advanced stuff. This is probably another thing I'm going to botch, um, botch the pronunciation of, but this is an equation-driven curve. This shape, um, basically is created by a by a hack series equation it's a nose cone for a rocket it is created by a by a shape when i get when we get to equation driven curves and those kinds of things those are the those kinds of equations are what we're going to be doing with but what you get into is that solidworks can almost do anything you, you can figure out how to tell it to you it really has no limitations of program that being said i'll stop you know playing Yes, man. Um, all the files for, vi for this video set, all the baby steps video set files, so all the models we work on, all the drawings, blah, 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 will be posted to the GitHub repository. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm going to commit it right now. So 
stay posted there, stay tuned there. And I'm go going to probably shoot the next video right after this, so that I stay in a good train of thought. Alright, well, take it easy, guys.